Good morning, it's Anne here from Domesticity. How is everyone today? Uh, I'll just give you a couple of minutes to uh, log on and join the live broadcast. I'll just check to see that I'm coming live in the group. Hopefully I am. How's everyone for this Friday? And the first day of March, officially autumn. Although you wouldn't think it was in some parts of Australia with the um, 40 degrees in Adelaide and um, 37 in Melbourne and 35 in Tasmania. <clears throat> okay, so I'm live in the group. And I just wanted to pop in today and just um, share a couple of tips with you to help you uh, meet this March savings challenge that I've created. Um, it's um, just a bit of a prompt to help motivate you to start uh, learning how to save more on uh, spending money on groceries. And it doesn't matter if it's $5 off your normal grocery spend or $50 or even $100. It's whatever you can um, manage, but it's just a way of um, getting you in that mindset to start rethinking about the groceries that you actually do buy. And I thought if we ran it for the month that we could, um, if you set yourself a goal by the end of the month to have a certain amount of money saved, you could uh, reward yourself or um, share it with the family, whatever you wanted to do. Um, I know, um, <clears throat> well, as you know, my grocery spend is $150 per fortnight, and I'm going to try and uh, take $25 per fortnight off um, that. So it's going to bring it down to $125 per fortnight. Admittedly, my pantry is still pretty full, but I'll still need fruit and vegetables and uh, probably a top up of meat, plus the regular things. So um, it's a good opportunity to also really use up everything that's in your pantry and um, make do with a lot of things. So all those little quick trips to the supermarket that you might do, which will boost your um, grocery spend up, um, if you can try and avoid them, that will help you um, save money as well. So that's the aim, to have um, a little bit of money for yourself by the 31st of March. And I want you to share with the group, if you like, um, what your goal is and what you're going to spend it on. And, and it helps make you um, accountable for, um, you know, treating yourself and rewarding yourself and seeing that you can actually do this and have have money for other things other than just uh, food and groceries um, spent wasting all that money at the, at the supermarket so first thing is to decide how much you're going to um, or first how often you're going to shop so I shop fortnightly well I guess you could say officially I shop weekly but I do the bulk of my shop fortnightly and then I just top up with uh, fresh um, fresh fruit and vegetables, milk, bread and dog food is usually the, the things that I run out of the most. So I'm going to stick with that and I'll go on Sunday, that's the start of my new fortnight, and I'm going to try something a bit different, something that I used to do quite a lot of um, a couple years ago, and that was go to um, a local market. The, it's, for those in Brisbane, it's the Mount Cravat um, Sunday Market. They have some ex excellent uh, fresh fruit and vegetables um, that are really well priced. I'm hoping that they're still really well priced and I've usually found it to be um, really fresh. Um, I'm going to go there and then um, the second thing that I'm going to do is a stock take. Um, I do tend to know exactly what I do have in my pantry, fridge and freezer at all times, but I'm just going to um, really use up what I've got in my pantry and base meals around that so um, it won't be such a thorough thing as to write down absolutely um, every 
everything, but just to see, you know, how many packets of pasta I've got, how much rice, um, how many tinned things I've got. Oh, I just feel like I've got an ant just crawled down my back. Um, the ants are crazy here at the moment. Oh, hope it hasn't. <laughs> I'll have to take my shirt off. I'll do that off camera. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do on Sunday. Um, the next thing is how much are you going to budget for each shop? So if you're finding that you're spending around $200 per week, for example, um, you know, it's up to you what you can, what you think you can do. If you think you can save $20 a week, that's um, based over four weeks, that's $80. You know, think what you, what you could spend $80 on. Um, like I'm hoping to save $50 by the end of the month and I'm going to shout myself a pedicure but you know $80 you could have some other treatment or take the family out for dinner or lunch or um, take them to one of those um, play centers or uh, trip to the movies or whatever it is that you want to do take your yourself and your partner out for dinner or lunch or um, buy yourself some new clothes whatever it is that you want to do uh, so decide on the amount that you're going to you're going to go for um and then yeah that's um basically it so how often you're going to shop how much you're going to spend and then um set yourself a goal even write it down and put it on the fridge you know new outfit um pedicure um night out with the husband whatever it is and put it on the fridge and then um that will help motivate you to stick to your goal so like i said stock take um it's the first today so kind of Look at what's in your pantry, fridge and freezer and see if you've got enough for, you know, the 31 breakfast, the 31 lunches, the 31, you know, 31 days in March. Oh, I hope this isn't an end. Sorry. Oh. Um, yeah, and um, all your snacks. And even though you don't have to have, 31 meals or 31 um, breakfasts, you know, just look at the ingredients that you need to make those things, things that your family will eat. Um, if you haven't downloaded the cheat sheet, that's, <coughs> <coughs> pardon me, um, if you haven't downloaded the cheat sheet that's in the group, by all means do that because that's got some great little tips on how to um, save extra extra money at the supermarket. Things like looking at the uh, the um, the price per 100 grams of each item. You know, um, avoiding the buy two get one three items if you don't need them. Um, buying the f fruit and vegetables that are in season, which is cheaper. But I wanted to talk about that, especially for those of us in Australia. Um, it's probably like this around the world, but um, especially in Australia, after uh, the recent flooding and fires and drought, um, it's just pushed all of the uh, fruit and vegetable and meat prices through the roof. Now, I did go shopping last Sunday at Woolworths, um, which isn't my regular shop, but I just found enough fruit and vegetables that we needed that were seasonal and that were um, I thought a reasonable price so if you're used to buying bananas and they're five dollars a kilo you know rethink that uh, one of the ways um, you can save some money on fruit and vegetables is to buy canned fruit frozen fruit and even though the kids might be used to eating a banana you know think of something like um, pe tinned peaches with custard for dessert or for um, a snack in their lunchbox in a little uh, resealable cup or just frozen fruit in a little cup for their lunch. Um, for breakfast, you know, tin fruit on um, cereal is, a, is another good one. Um, try to get the tin fruit that's in natural juice, not in um, syrup. All your frozen berries, you can get frozen um, mango, frozen uh, raspberries, blueberries, all that sort of thing. So if the fruit's too expensive, uh, just try and, and rethink uh, what you might be able to do with fresh or frozen. 
uh, frozen or tinned. Same with the vegetables. Um, tinned vegetables, they may not look exactly the same as fresh, you know, like they seem to be a little bit waterlogged. But, you know, chopped up in a stew um, is good. Little, uh, little potatoes, canned potatoes, uh, add a little bit to um, a stew, same as the peas and corn and um, tin beetroot, uh, all those sorts of things, plus frozen. I find there's nothing wrong with frozen vegetables. And when you look at the price per 100 grams compared to fresh, there um, that's quite a big saving there. With your meat, the price of meat is just um, ridiculous at the moment. But look at um, fish. Tin fish, frozen fish, um, you know, you can do so much with tuna or tin salmon, um, you know, your tuna patties, tuna mornay, uh, you know, tuna or salmon on a salad plate, uh, your frozen fish, you know, you can just grill that or use it in a curry or a stir fry or crumb it or batter it yourself to make fish and chips. Um, and don't forget about eggs. Eggs are, are well priced in comparison to meat and they're an excellent source of protein. You could have eggs for any meal of the day really in a quiche or scrambled or fried. Um, you know, there's some beautiful egg dishes that people make from all around the world. So do a bit of a Google search on different egg recipes. Um, to save yourself some money. Um, legumes as well, things like um, lentils, chickpeas. Um, I know they may not be appealing to a lot of people, but I've seen some you know, absolutely delicious you know, lentil burger recipes um, and made them, and they're absolutely delicious. So you wouldn't think that you were eating lentils. So have a bit of a Google search for those. You can have them on a burger or make them into little balls, you know, falafel, a uh, little Lebanese or Middle Eastern type um, uh, cake or ball that you can use in, um, in a donut kebab or on a salad plate, that sort of thing, made from chickpeas. So <clears throat> um, buying them dried is always cheaper as well, but, you know, buying them in a tin, you can get for a dollar or less a tin, and you probably only need a tin... Um, per meal. So there's some ways to save on meat, fruit and vegetables. Um, and also, uh, if you are missing an ingredient, learn to um, substitute. So this is why I promote having a well stocked pantry because you can always make the ingredient that you're missing. Like the other night we had, um, I made a bit of coleslaw and I didn't have coleslaw dressing, but just with the mayonnaise that I had and a bit of lemon juice, vinegar and sugar, I was able to make a quite a nice tasting um, coleslaw dressing. So, um, you know, substitute where you can. Uh, omit the ingredient if you don't need it. That will save you running to the shop to um, to buy buy that one thing. When you, you go to the shop to buy one thing and then you come out having spent $50. I know it's so easy to do. So... Um, just decide on when you're going to shop, stick with that, um, stock up on all your bread and, and other things. And if you run out of bread, you know, have some things on um, standby like wraps or um, rice cakes, corn thins, you know, all those sort of things, cracker, cracker breads. Um, yeah, and just, you know, even if you have to physically withdraw the, the cash and keep it in, in your hand, to use for shopping and then when it's done you know it's done you, you just know that you can't um, spend any more but I really encourage you to to give this a try and to reward yourself and um, know that you can do it that it's not that difficult just having to rethink um, the way that you uh, spend and how you spend your money but also um, what I'm going to ask you to do is also um, keep just keep a track um, whether you do it in a online in a um, spreadsheet or just write it on a notepad just keep track of the meals that you're actually making and serving throughout the month and that <clears throat> when you see that you have saved the money and you'll go well you know we we ate pretty well 
considering that we were on a tight budget, um, these are some, and the kids like these particular meals, or my husband didn't mind this, then you'll have something to refer back to, and this will um, form part of your menu, which is something that I teach in the Shop Smart Eat Well program, is to create that menu. So when you find the meals that your family loves to eat and you know what ingredients um, go into those meals and they're, they're the ones that you buy, you just keep topping up those ingredients all the time. So I'd love to know too, if you uh, want to share in the group, things that um, you have tried that the family don't normally eat and it was a real success or um, please share with the group the way that you might have substituted or um, created a new recipe on your own. You know, one of um, our lovely members shared that she discovered uh, uh, beef stroganoff made with ground meat and, um, you know, you can make stroganoff with any meat basically, but to her that was something that um, she was um, really surprised with and, and is really going to help her save some money instead of buying you know, uh, good quality rump steak or other steak to make beef stroganoff one of her family's favourite dishes. So please share those things with the group. Um, you know, we don't know uh, what we don't know until we share it. Sometimes it might seem obvious to some people, but if, um, you know, it may not be known to other people. So please let us know um, how you go. And, um, you know, if you wanted to find out more about how the Shop Smart Eat Well program works and how I can adjust um, my grocery spend um, so easily and the things that I buy, please um, check out the Shop Smart Eat Well program and download the uh, workbook. You might be able to um, get yourself all set up. I've spent um, February really, really busy um, creating all these menus and um, stock sheets for eight lovely people in the group and I've been in touch with them about how they're going and they've said that it's made such a huge difference and I'm going to be um, releasing that again in a couple of months time and I'm going to try a different format this time because it was just so hectic in February trying to um, do all of that one-on-one -on -one, uh, shop smart eat well program for everybody so I'm going to try a different format so uh, if you haven't already joined the wait list for that, I'll drop the link in this uh, live broadcast for you to join the wait list so that you can get on board um, quickly with that because I only open it up to eight people. I might increase that um, this month because there was a lot of a lot, few people that missed out, but the workbook is always there um, to do it yourself. So. I wish you all the best um, to do this challenge. You know, please give it a go, even if it's, even if you're not setting yourself a specific target or a specific goal. Please um, just rethink some of the ingredients and try to um, not buy so many prepackaged things. That's another big um, money money spender. Um, and I'd love to hear your results. Let us know in the group what your goals are and what you're going to spend your money on. You might give someone else an idea of um, what to treat yourself with and I look forward to supporting you uh, throughout the month of March in this special savings challenge. So good luck and keep us posted and feel free to ask anything in the group um, that you that you need to, you might need to know. I'd love to be able to help you. So um, happy autumn. I hope the weather cools down soon wherever you are or warms up wherever you are. And I'll catch you in the group again soon and enjoy your weekend. Bye for now.